In the words of a great man, sometimes you just gotta go fast. But there are a lot of builds on this already, so behold, my lithium ion battery volt. You're watching Framework, my Warframe weapon synergy build series. And Volt's weapon synergies are kind of basic, so we're gonna focus on his build first. The basic premise of Battery Volt is that you can gain energy from all sources while under the drain that comes from holding your electric shield. Normally, abilities that drain energy over time prevent you from gaining energy from things like Trinity's Energy Vampire, and especially from things like the Xenric Focus Tree's Energizing Dash. But for whatever reason, Electric Shield doesn't. As you can see, I'm still gaining energy from Energizing Dash even though I'm running with the shield, and even if I run really fast, still energy positive. This may be partly because Electric Shield doesn't drain any energy when you're standing still. It doesn't actually have a base channeling drain, it's just that when you move, you lose energy as you move. Anyway, the point is that since you can regen energy even under the drain of Electric Shield, you can use Quick Thinking and Prime Flow, take advantage of Volt's huge energy pool, and be pretty tanky because you not only have the defense layer of an indestructible riot shield right in front of you that you can move around freely with the camera, even if you're controlled, I'm gonna get staggered by falling, and as you can see I can still move it so if you get staggered by quick thinking you can also still move it so not only do you have an indestructible riot shield you also have quick thinking as a safety net and if you get staggered by quick thinking you can still move your riot shield around to block bullets from wherever you're getting shot from to make sure that you don't get shot again. Of course, to keep all of this working, you do have to charge it back up by using Energizing Dash over and over again. That's the, the lithium ion part. We're talking rechargeable batteries here. Now, back in my day, you could just copper top it up, but apparently times have changed. Some of you may remember that the old Xenric Energy Regen, Energy Overflow, didn't need to be refreshed, but it was also weaker. The new Energizing Dash is a lot more Energy Regen, and Volt's energy expenditures have also been adjusted since. Holding Electric Shield used to have a passive as well. So overall, this build is better than ever. It's just slightly more tedious to use because you have to plug it into the void every 30 seconds to recharge your lithium ion volt battery with Energizing Dash. All right, so let's demonstrate that thing I was talking about where quick thinking can stagger you, but you can save yourself by using electric shield to block the bullets even while guard control. So we're getting to quick thinking territory. There we are. And now see, I was getting shot from over there, but I can block the bullets with my electric shield and move it around even while getting shot. So I'm getting staggered. I'll move it there. And now see, I'm not getting staggered again from that source. So yeah, it keeps you pretty safe. And because Volt has such a huge energy pool with primed flow and his massive base energy, you have a really, really large amount of energy to work with. And the huge energy regen that you still get while holding electric shield will keep you powered up. Again, you just got to make sure you keep plugging it in. So for the stats, the actual stats of the build, we want to make sure our efficiency and duration are good because whether we run out of energy or not is basically based on how good our efficiency and duration are, how much we spend and then how much we take. So you know, we're going to be taking energy to save ourselves with quick thinking. We're going to be recharging it from Energizing Dash. So we want to make sure we're not spending too much on abilities. And indeed, you won't be. With 75% efficiency on a Volt, like most of the powers you're actually going to use are like six energy. It's, it's not a big deal. So you're not going to run out of energy. That's not a concern. But duration, balancing duration in a certain way is kind of nice. If you have it at the amount I have, your electric shields last about the amount of time that Energizing Dash lasts, a little bit longer. So see, this lasts about 42 seconds, and now it's ticking down. So if I make one and then charge up with Energizing Dash and then pick it up and start running around, I'll see you in like uh, 25 seconds. So you can see that my Energizing Dash buff and my Electric Shield timer are both about to run out at about the same time. So Energizing Dash goes down, Electric Shield goes down. Now I can make a new shield, Dash, and then pick up the shield and my timers are synchronized. And the shield lasts a little bit longer so that I'm safe longer rather than charged for longer. Since the shield does block infinite damage, it's it's safer to have the shield longer than the energy longer. Well, that's important because you do drop shields when you use void mode. So like, see the shield that I was holding is up there now. <laughs> so you do want to have them somewhat synchronized because you are gonna drop your shield when you dash. And then because you dashed, you're not gonna be near where it was before. Yeah, so duration and efficiency. And then I still think range is kind of a dump stat on Volt, so the remaining task is to make us go fast. I think Sprint Boost is actually kind of the best Lori here. This is a bit janky, and I understand some people want Corrosive Rejection, but we already have a huge Corrosive Output weapon. Corrosive Rejection is really not going to increase the damage of at least your Twin Krakatas very much, so having some more Sprint Speed is nice. Rush is also a really good Sprint Speed mod, and combining a little bit of Strength and a little bit of Sprint Speed is the best way to get the most total Sprint Speed for each mod slot. So having both of them be moderately high is better than having one of them be super high. A lot of people are just going to stack Strength, but this is actually faster for the amount of mod slots I'm using. And a small added benefit is that this causes you to be pretty fast without 
sprint on without your speed, if you just sprint normally, you're actually pretty quick. Like, this is a normal run speed for a Warframe. That's not bad. And then, obviously, it goes crazy pants when you hit speed, and then you go really, really fast, and that's great. But it makes it a nice little balance, and if you run out of energy, you can still kind of get away from enemies real nice. Also, keep in mind that picking up electric shields does make you slower. You can see I'm going at this speed now, and then if I drop the electric shield, I'll suddenly go faster... Not by like a huge amount, but definitely faster. Just keep it in mind. Finally, I find shocking speed to be a pretty high value augment. This gives you an automatic electricity proc whenever you touch an enemy when you have speed active, which you will because it's like no energy and it's very spammable. And it also gives you an electricity proc for condition overload, of course, but it's nice to have crowd control around your body. This makes it even more true that enemies near you are just gonna be CC'd. You can do this thing with electric shield where you charge it with shock and then it also will electricity proc enemies if you run into them. But having both means that enemies all around you are pretty much always going to be crowd controlled. You're not going to get meleeed, you're not going to have enemies all over you. If you run through enemies, like you careen into enemies horribly, they'll get knocked around and crowd controlled. See, these enemies aren't even shooting me, I've taken absolutely no damage. And I'm standing around a bunch of level 80 heavy gunners. Now onto the good stuff. We have a directional bullet shield that adds electricity damage and critical damage to our weapons, and we can't hold it with our primary out, so our secondary is going going to be our riot shield gun, and the Twinkrakatas are absolutely perfect for this slot. They have insane damage, high accuracy, just about exactly 100% critical chance with hydraulic crosshairs, which is easy to activate because of that high accuracy, so they'll fully benefit from electric shield. Every shot will get that critical damage bonus. It's nice to have a bit of crowd control so you can get your follow-up crazy fast headshots. They stack tons of corrosive, they have crazy fire rate, armor and nullifier bubbles are no obstacle to them, and their one drawback is their long reload time but speed greatly increases your reload speed. Okay, do you mind, honestly? So as you can see, the reload is rather snappy. Even though the Twin Krakatas are known for their wicked long reload, you can actually do it pretty quick. As opposed to their normal reload time, which is distinctly slower. And even during downtime between magazines, you're pretty safe because you can use shock for extra crowd control. It's a one-handed action, so you can do it while you're shooting or while you're reloading. You can just spam it out, keep enemies controlled, even another layer of safety while you're electric shielding or shooting or whatever. Okay, so with Twinger Katas, we've got burst damage covered in our loadout, so it would be nice to have some sustained damage and some area controlling damage alongside it. For primaries, eh, like you drop your electric shield if you're carrying it when you switch to your primary, you can't be carrying it. So it would be nice to have something that benefits from the bonuses of electric shield, or that like wants that type of thing, maybe some extra critical stats or whatever, but it's not really that important, and it's always nice to have a weapon that isn't tightly synergizing with your build, so if something goes wrong or you run out of energy or something, there's a weapon in your loadout that just works fine on its own and doesn't care that much about the synergies, that's going to be Tiburon Prime. This weapon is a great fit for a lot of reasons. It having three firing modes is nice if you were to run out of ammo because your carrier dies, you can switch to semi, which is competitive with burst fire, but saves more ammo. And if you need to kill nullifiers because you, your carrier dies or whatever, and you don't want to twinker katas or you can't because your carrier died and it's got no ammo, you've got the full auto mode as a backup, which is awesome. So that, that fills out combat spaces. This is a very well-rounded weapon, obviously, that's the whole point. And then I'm building it for viral and hunter munitions. This is particularly nice because with Argon Scope, this weapon does also have about 100% critical chance. So every shot through an electric shield, if you happen to fire it through one is gonna get that additional critical damage and that's one of the only ways to increase the damage of slash procs slash procs aren't affected by like more slash damage or whatever but they are affected by crits and headshots so being able to stand behind an electric shield take plenty of time shooting enemies and then get a critical damage increase this will increase the damage of hunter munitions a lot and then because the weapon fires in bursts with a medium status chance you're pretty likely to get one viral proc per burst so it's it's great in its burst fire mode that's the mode i recommend you fire in and again generally you'll see me recommending Vigilante Armaments on most builds like this, simple hybrid builds like this, but Argon Scope is better for the critical consistency for Hunter Munitions, and also because of Volt's Electric Shield. Just to show you some of that sweet, sweet Tiburon Prime burst slash damage, as you can see, it kind of depends on how much you proc Hunter Munitions. This is kind of always the case with Hunter Munitions weapons, but when enemies are in a big crowd like this, it's a good time. This weapon doesn't really need the reload speed that bad, but if you fire it a lot, if you fire it pretty recklessly, it is nice to be able to reload it in like a snap like that. 
And you can see it's really, really easy to deal with crowds of enemies like this. You just put a shield in front of them and you can just snipe at them all day. Great, so I'll give you zero guesses what weapon is next. Yeah, this is for AoE clearing and also running very fast. Pole arms have the unique distinction of having a few stances, specifically Bleeding Willow and Shimmering Blight, which I don't have the polarity for of having two stances which quick melee without stopping your sprint. So you can sprint at full speed while quick meleeing with this weapon. So I'm going to activate speed, I'm going to start running around, and you'll be able to see that I can attack without slowing down. Of course, I can't actually steer while doing that, and if I go over a little bump, I'm going to do a slam attack, but you get the point. You can attack very, very fast. So that's a fantastic reason to use a pole arm with Volt, and then also they have very large range. The Zaw ones aren't as crazy as some of the other ones, but they have good range, so that's very nice. And then I've built this weapon to be a condition overload monster. Of course, because we have two different elements on our primary and our secondary, we're running Viral on the Tiburon Prime, and Corrosive on the Twin Krakatas, and we have a bunch of electricity procs flying around because of our build, especially Shocking Speed, which will automatically proc anything in melee range. Conditioned Overload is pretty likely to be kind of insane, so this build is intended to attack something or finish something off or like DPS something that you've already been fighting a little bit because it's filled out with Toxin. Toxin is an element we don't have in the build yet, so it's going to be maximum combination with Conditioned Overload, and in addition, the Cripath Strike, the Plague Cripath Strike, is mostly Puncture, so not an element that we're seeing on the other weapons. The Tiburon is mostly going to inflict Slash. We have Weeping Wounds and about 44% status chance. This will balance out to giving you 100% status chance, guaranteed status is every attack, when you reach a 2.5x combo multiplier. That's about 45 hits, so pretty doable with a weapon with large range. Let's just take... So even just quick meleeing a little bit, like into these enemies, we're just going to careen into them with our electric shield up. Of course, it doesn't gain bonuses from it, but it's still covering us. So we just attack for like a few seconds, and now we're at a 2x counter, 33 hits, and if we attack just a little bit more, 2.5x super, super reasonably. So you see, you're, you are going to have 100% status. Like, functionally, it's always going to be 100% status. So it's probably clear by now, but this is a modified hybrid build using only one element and Weeping Wounds, instead of what I would normally suggest, which would be two elements with dual status. Since Primed Fever Strike is such a huge bonus, Toxin is a reasonable element, and it's also one we don't have in our build, and we're often going to have some armor reduction or just time for the Toxin procs to tick because of either Corrosive from our Twin Gregadas or Electricity procs stunning our target, Toxin is a great fit. Bleeding Willow. Okay, so personally, I like this combo in Bleeding Willow where you attack twice and then briefly hold and you do these like big jumps. I think it's a lot of fun. It's kind of weird to perform on Volt because he moves so fast already, but it is a nice movement combo and I kind of wanted to show it and I also just like that combo. I think it's fun to do. So, you know, either Shimmering Blight or Bleeding Willow, it doesn't really matter. If you make a Zal Pole Arm, it's gonna have a dash by default. So Bleeding Willow, so you get the quick melee that you can sprint while doing, and then that combo is fun, go figure. I just wanted to show you that. And then for Exodias, you can kind of use whatever you want. If you were using Twirling Spire, it has really good synergy with Exodia Hunt, which pulls enemies in on slams, because Twirling Spire's spam combo pulls en is, a, is a slam attack, so it'll pull enemies in really fast. But I don't really think that many Exodias have good synergy with Bleeding Willow on a pole arm in particular. I chose Force because it will give me extra reach when I'm running through levels of low enemies. They'll create these weapon damage pulses around me in 6 meters that will just randomly one-shot like stuff on the sides while I'm careening through a mission. So when I'm using Volt for speed running, that's kind of nice but it's not really a huge deal. And Carrier Prime. Well, with all of the reckless charging into the fray that we've been doing this entire time, honestly, I think it's clear that you just want a Sentinel that's tanky, but it is nice to have Carrier Prime to make sure your Twin Gricadas stay full. I usually use Carrier Prime as like my rock Sentinel. It has the largest spread of defensive stats overall, closely followed by Dariga, but meaningfully stronger than Dariga's defense. And I just like it as a, a sentinel I know will stick around and will keep my weapons full, and it's like a stability sentinel. If you're using a build that's like a little bit risky, and maybe not so tanky, and maybe the guns are a little ammo wasty, it sort of solves all of those things all at once, which is great. I personally do not use a sentinel weapon on it, since I'm using it for its tankiness. I like to spend the space on the mods that make it as tanky as possible. And because the simulacrum is really buggy, you're not actually seeing the full stats. If you look in the top right corner, you can see- Okay, to close out the video, 
janky tip time. Volt's passive generates a, like a little damage boost that happens on your next attack. So it'll affect your next bullet fired, your next melee strike, your next shock, or your next discharge, or whatever. When you shock an electric shield, it gains the damage of the shock when it hits enemies. Yeah, it'll gain the proc and the damage. That actually passes over with Volt's passive. So if I run around for a little bit, you'll see in the top right corner I'm charging up Volt's passive and it's going to cap out at 1,000. And then if I were to charge an electric shield with this, it's going to save the 1,000 damage. And then that electric shield does much more damage to enemies it touches. So like even though that looks the same as this, that one over there has way, way more damage in it. So if you hit enemies with this, if you ram like level 30 enemies with this, they'll just die. They just straight up die. I've been Zandy, and this has been Framework, my Warframe Weapon Synergy build series, and I hope you enjoyed it very much. To check out other episodes of Framework, look for that film reel style thumbnail when I upload content in the future, or just check out my Framework playlist. Both things that would be easier to do if you decide to subscribe. However, YouTube does not always show you my videos, so to remove the middleman, if you'd like to get a little bit more intimate, you should go in the description and check out my Twitter or my Discord or wherever else you'd like to follow me, and if you do so, YouTube has no say. You will see my content when it comes out because I post all my new videos to both of those places. And if you'd like to help me make more videos like this one, consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll see you in the next one, folks. I hope you had a good time. Thanks for watching.